Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In this video, I'm gonna answer a question from a viewer named Darren about how to manage uh, withdrawals from uh, a taxable account uh, if you choose to retire early. Let me read you Darren's question. He says, I hope this finds you well. I'm a fellow large law firm attorney. Welcome, this is my old firm, Winston and Strawn. And I find your approach relatable and sound. I have a question regarding early retirement. I'm contemplating retiring in my early 50s. Currently, all of my bonds are held in retirement accounts. I'd ideally like to keep them there. Uh, he, he mentions he'd kind of like to keep them there until required minimum distributions kick in. But here's the problem. He says, <clears throat> since my brokerage account is 100% equities, this could leave me exposed in early retirement if the market tanks. And I don't want to have to sell equities at a low price. Is the answer just to build up five to seven years worth of expenses in cash and municipal bonds in my brokerage account, or am I missing something obvious? It's a great question. I actually do think there's a better approach, but let me first talk about the question. I mean, Darren asks a good one, and uh, the sequence of returns risk, which sort of is, is a, a term uh, that describes the risk that in er your early years of retirement, the market could tank. I would also say there's a sequence of inflation risks, something we're kind of worried about right now, where in your early retirement years, inflation could spike. Those are both uh, real risks. And, and on the sequence of returns risk, there's always that question, what are we gonna do if the market tanks? Now, Darren suggested one approach is between now and when he retires early, save up five to seven years worth of expenses and effectively cash, maybe some uh, municipal uh, tax advantage bonds uh, as well. And certainly that could be approached particularly if your goal is, is to try to get to 59 and a half, uh, where you can then start to spend retirement money without the 10% penalty. Yeah, there are other ways to avoid the 10% penalty as well, but that's one approach. But in Darren's case, he really wants to get all the way to 72, the required minimum distribution. So, you know, I guess you could say, well, I'll save five to seven years uh, worth of expenses and then sort of implement a bucket strategy, which I really don't recommend. I think a bucket strategy just complicates everything. I really do think there's a very simple approach to this problem. And here's what I would recommend. If the market is down and your equities fall, uh, let's imagine, for example, he started with a 70-30 allocation, 70% stocks, 30% bonds. We know the 30% is in his retirement accounts. He may have stock uh, funds in there too, but we know 30% uh, the bond portfolio is in his retirement account. We know that Whatever percent is in his brokerage account, that's all equities, right? So 70-30, just as an example. And let's imagine the market, it's down, it, gets, it has a bad year, and he's at 60-40 before he's even taken any money out. He's, he's lost a 10% shift in his allocation. So what's he going to do? Here's, what I would, here's how I would handle it. I would go ahead and take what I needed to live on out of the taxable account. That's right, I would sell stocks. Now, before I did that, I would spend any dividends I earned, and maybe that's one to two percent depending on your portfolio right and then i would sell stocks to generate the rest of what i needed uh for the year and that might actually take my allocation even worse right it wasn't 70 30 it, a bad market took it to 60 40 and now i don't know maybe it's uh uh down to 58 percent or 57 percent in stocks we're sort of we're going backwards right we're doing all the things we shouldn't do we're bad market and then we're selling stocks but but here's the key i'm then going to rebalance and rebalancing <laughs> fixes everything. Now, in this case, what am I gonna do? I need to sell some bonds and buy stocks. Well, I can't do that in my taxable account. I don't own, own any bonds, but that's okay. I'll rebalance in my retirement account. I'll sell whatever amount of my bond funds I need to, to get the bonds back to, in our hypothetical, the original 30% allocation. And then I'll take the proceeds of that sale. Again, I'm inside the retirement accounts, IRAs, 401ks, and I'll buy whatever stock index fund, whether it's a US total market, S&P 500, maybe it's an international stock fund, whatever my overall investment plan is, I'll take the proceeds from that bond sale and I'll invest it in equities inside my retirement accounts to get me back to whatever my plan was. Again, in this hypothetical, it was 70% stocks and 30% bonds. So when it's all said and done, yes, we sold some stocks in our taxable account, to generate the funds we needed to, to live on. But then we turned around and bought not only that amount, but even more because the market had fallen in stocks in our, ta our tax uh, advantaged accounts, our 401ks 
and IRA. So the net result of all of this was we were actually a net buyer of stocks. Even after you factor in what we sold in our taxable account, we ended up buying more than that in our retirement accounts to get back to that 70-30 uh, split. And that's generally how I would approach uh, distributions in retirement, even if I didn't have the extra sort of hurdles that Darren might have retiring early with 100% of equities in his taxable account. I think this idea of taking distributions and then rebalancing is a good approach to managing our money and our investments in retirement. Frankly, I think it, it does much, much better than uh, a bucket strategy. F first of all, it's very simple. And two, with a bucket strategy, you're often maybe not selling in a down market, but you're also typically not buying. Uh, and that's really what you want to do when the market falls. You want to, And that's what rebalancing causes us to do. Rebalancing causes us to sell the asset classes that have gone up and buy the asset classes that have, have gone down to bring us back into whatever our investment plan was to begin with. So Darren, that's how I would handle it. I think it, it's like sometimes the best solutions are complicated. I think in, in this case, the best solutions, at least in my view, are actually quite simple. And you could do that all on the same day. If you take your distributions uh, once a year, you could imagine literally logging into your brokerage account, selling uh, the, the equity uh, index funds that you need to to get your distributions for the year, and then immediately rebalancing, which in this case would mean logging into your retirement account, selling your bond fund. If it's a mutual fund, you might have to wait a day until you get the access to the proceeds, and then you can log back in and buy the, the, the stock funds that you need to, consistent with your plan, to bring you back to your original uh, asset allocation. So that's how I would handle it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Be happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.